Good morning. This is Cheryl. Wake up in the morning. Do you feel good? Do you, um, are you stiff? Are you sore? Do you have sinus trouble? If you do, it's probably what you're putting in your mouth, and we're going to talk about that today. But first, I want to talk to you about something that I learned about probably 40-some years ago, and it's what we do at the table. Because a lot of times, it, it's not only the food, but it's how we eat the food sometimes that causes the problem. And um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is you don't drink in your meals, with, with your meals. And a lot of people just laugh. They go, I want to drink anything I want to drink. Well, you can. Go on and do it. But suffer as you get older and older because you don't digest. You pr when you put liquid in your bottom, in your body, and it goes to the bottom of your stomach, you cannot digest protein, you, uh, uh, minerals, and calcium. But the other thing that changed my life was it, the high chloric acid in the bottom of the stomach. When you drink water or drink a pop, you weaken it and you don't kill your parasites. Because I asked God one time, <laughs> I said, why do we have so many? Because I was teaching on parasites. That was the first class I ever taught 28 years ago. And I read, I don't know how many books. I, and I got videos of parasites coming out of people. I said, God, why did you make these parasites? They're killing us. But then when I found out through this doctor's book, that as like a vegetable, if you don't clean it good enough and it has a parasite in it, or you go out and eat from the garden and don't wash it and it's got a parasite on it, your high chloric acid in your stomach will kill it if you still have some. But if you've been drinking water or something, you don't. So that's why you, it just, you just don't drink. Consuming liquids with food dilutes the digestive system and it messes it up. And so... Uh, I, my husband, after he, after I told him about this, he kind of went along with me, and I have never forgot this day. We were sitting at the table eating, and he got choked, and I mean, he was really choked. He said, water! And so I ran over there, got a glass of water, Grunt was running back, and went, oh, no, just go on and choke, and it will pass. And it was just, I just did not, because it said that if you start getting the saliva back into your mouth, uh, it, it won't go away. I mean, you get more and more saliva if you eat without uh, the liquid. But if you eat with the liquid, all it does is weaken your high chloric acid and you don't digest your food, especially protein. And you don't break down your minerals and you don't break down your calcium. And we need all that and you don't kill your parasites. So we need every bit of that uh, taken for us. So, uh, so we just... Anyway, that was 15, over 15 years ago, and now we do not try to touch any water before our meals. Um, the next one is leave the tension at the door. If you've been upset or yelling or crying or whatever, just leave it when you go to the table or when you start to eat. If not, it says that uh, stre stress hormones produce too many digestive juices, and it causes heartburn, and it causes acid stomach. If you want an acid stomach, you want GERDs and all that stuff, then be upset and eat because the body, the body, it's all in one. And you just get so upset that you cannot digest your food and then you wonder why it hurts or, or why a child says, I got a stomach ache. Find out what they've been watching on TV. I had one customer, he was in his 80s, and he had digested probably, I mean, he couldn't digest nothing. And I had tried everything on him. Come to find out he was watching the news. I said, quit watching the news. And when he did, his food started digesting. And I went, look at, I said, you can watch it before, you can watch it after, but do not watch while you're eating. And so he found out that he, he was, uh, you know, it, it affected him. And the, um, the other one is... Um, Number three is leave, chew, chew your food. Take, you know, take small bites and chew your food because if you don't chew them, then chewing what it does is gets the saliva going. The saliva gets the juices in your stomach going and then your stomach gets the stomach ready for the food. But if you take one or two bites and it's gone, the stomach's not ready for all that and the stomach doesn't have teeth down there. You got your teeth. And I keep telling people, you got a teeth for a reason, to chew, and it makes them stronger because, see, you have bone underneath your teeth. Your teeth is held in by bone, and it makes the bone stronger the more you chew. 
stronger your teeth, well not the teeth themselves, but the teeth, that, the bone that holds the teeth gets stronger and stronger because you're exercising it. And people don't even think through that. And um, so let's go. What, what we're going to talk about is what changed me in my husband's life was eating towards blood type diet. I mentioned it in one of the other ones, but I didn't go into detail. And we're O blood. I'm O positive and he's O negative. And we've been eating towards it for over 15 years now. And when we don't eat towards it, we, we know it. We know it, believe me. Especially as you get older. You, we, because O blood has to have protein. And um, I had a couple of ladies that was vegetarians and they was old blood. And I had listened to this doctor. I wanted them to listen. See, when I find something out, instead of me saying it, I said, well, you want to listen to the cassette tape about this doctor saying that you will have a nervous breakdown if you don't have some kind of protein at least once or twice a week because there's an enzyme that your colon needs uh, to keep the nervous system in balance. And uh, oh, they said, no, I'm a vegetarian. We're not going to touch no meat. I said, how about fish? I mean, it could be fish. No, not going to do it. Both of them ended up having nervous breakdowns. And, and they was in the 70s. And I've never forgot that. I was in my 50s then. But I have never forgot that. Every, they said what came to pass. And it was just amazing what that doctor said. I mean, he knew what he was talking about. Um, but you can't overcook your protein. And I do that all the time because I like well done stuff. But when you overcook it, uh, it says that uh, it, it's, it, it doesn't have the benefit. It doesn't have the, we, ki we kill the um, free amino acids in it. Overcook, it's, it, it's rough on the digestive system. Meat should be organic and it should be, um, it should be cooked very slowly. And when you cook it slowly and, and that, it, it helps it a lot. Um, and when you eat your f protein, old blood should eat it. A lot of times people eat it with uh, starchy food, but it's got to be low starchy like lettuce and um, broccoli and things like that. If you eat meat and broccoli, wonderful. But if you eat meat and potatoes, you develop um, alcohol in your stomach because I had... One year, it was many years ago, but over probably over 15 years ago, these ladies kept on walking, coming, coming in and said, I've got cirrhosis of the liver. I've got cirrhosis of the liver. I said, well, do you drink alcohol? No. I said, well, most of the time that's what, you know. And then I started studying. And when I found out that potatoes and I said, do you eat red meat and potatoes? Said, oh, yeah, we eat it all the time. Well, they was making alcohol in their stomach that was causing the cirrhosis of the liver. And so we had to, I kept on telling, trying to tell them to teach, uh, to teach them to eat a lot of vegetables. They said, eat a small piece of meat and three times more green vegetables. Because see, old blood is real acid. We're, we're the strongest blood type. It's O first and then B and then AB and then A. And we're the strongest blood type, but we're really a lot of acid. And to make us not acid, uh, meat is acid. But also, if we eat our vegetables, three times more vegetables, then that makes us alkaline and it helps us. And some of the uh, food that we should be eating is broccoli and romaine lettuce. Uh, my husband goes every two weeks and gets 24 heads of romaine lettuce. So we do eat with lots of olive oil. And then you put carrots, you put whatever vegetable that's on you. We, we eat cabbage maybe once in a blue moon, but cabbage stops our thyroid and cauliflower stops our thyroid. So you need to find out which is which. And eating um, a big proportion of vegetables helps to balance our, our um, being alkaline and not so much acid. Uh, we need to avoid corn, and I'm from the corn state, and I was raised on corn. That's why I was 95 pounds at five years old, because uh, I was eating milk and corn. And you, uh, corn will put weight on you. Every time you eat corn, it says it will put weight because old blood cannot digest it. And we cannot digest wheat as well as dairy. Dairy causes sinus. I used to have sinus where I could use a whole box of Kleenexes. I had so much. And ever since I've been on this, uh, uh, this blood type diet, no. I have not used a box of Kleenex at one time because I used to have all this sinus trouble. But if I keep away from dairy, corn, and uh, wheat, and it says uh, no cashews and no black olives, um, old blood 
we, we need to have amino acids. So I started, after I did the study, I went, oh, we, you get amino acids from protein, but if you overcook it and don't cook it slow like I told you to, then what happens is um, the amino acids, is, we kill them. And you gotta take amino acids on an empty stomach because it's such small. And so I've been putting them in our vitamins and minerals. And just in a day or two, me and my husband's noticed more energy in us. So I thought that, and it really helps with the brain, the amino acids. When, we don't, when you don't eat meat, a lot of people say, I just crave wheat. Well, they crave wheat because they're not getting their amino acids from the red meat because uh, wheat has amino acids in it too. And so, um, but one of, the, one, one of the herbs that we have is called super algae. And now algae, old blood can't have, but super algae has got a whole bunch of like spirulina and a whole bunch of other stuff with it. And it's beneficial and it helps to stabilize old blood so we don't have, um, we're not out of balance and not too acid. Um, most old bloods are ADD or ADHD. Um, it's just the old blood thing. Uh, so uh, food actually that helps uh, you, sh when you use, there's three kinds of food. There's food that's beneficial, that's our medicine. There's food that's neutral, that's our food. And there's food to avoid that poisons our blood and causes inflammation. So if we keep away from inflammation, we don't have arthritis, we don't have stiffness. Uh, oh, I can remember uh, when I was in my late 30s and 40s, I was so stiff I had to tell myself to walk. Um, but neutral really helps you to, that's your food. Neutral Calm is all the B vitamins. Uh, I, had a, I had a lady that was um, cleaning my teeth maybe 20 years ago, and she said, oh, you don't have no Bs. I thought, how does she know I don't have no peas? When I got my mouth open and she's cleaning my teeth. And you can tell by your tongue. When your tongue is real rough and it's got little, you know, it's got little splits in it, no bees. And I read that in a doctor's book afterwards and I went, oh, that's how she knew. She looked at my tongue. <laughs> so, and omega-3, oh, that helps you with inflammation. It helps you. I have people that shake my hands and their hands are so dry and my hand is just so soft and pretty, even at 76. Rosehip is a vitamin C, um, which old blood can digest. The other vitamin Cs we do, do not break down. And if you don't absorb your food or you don't think you absorb your food, small intestinal detox, help, the, uh, the, the pepsin helps to break down the dairy and the corn that you ate in the past is coated on the side. You think, well, I'm not eating it. It's out of me. Oh, no, it's not. We have herbs that helps to break that down so you can get it out of your system so you can absorb it. Uh, and then super algae, um, a lot of my old bloods, uh, they love it because it nourishes old blood and it has the amino acids and it keeps the acid under control so you don't get things that old blood gets. Uh, old blood can have an overactive immune system. That means we can kill different things in our body, but the main problem is that uh, what we get overactive and then we don't feel good. 5-HTP, uh, that's for uh, dopamine and it helps with that. Cayenne helps with, uh, it rids the body of toxins. Now this is the one that I got on just taking this study, Sell You Smooth. It says it relieves edema, it reduces excess fat in the body. And I thought we can get rid of all the fat that we need. Colostrum is an immune balancer. CoQ10 helps with the heart tissue. A magnesium helps with the muscles and with the uh, colon spasms. And focus attention. I have a lot of people on focus attention because it balances the, re the left and the right hand side of the brain. And folic acid helps with the mood swing, but you have to take B with it. It assists by making red blood cells. Um, well, my daughter won't let me finish it. I'll let, I'll let you go, but I hope you have learned something and enjoy eating towards your blood type.